In this video, I'm going to talk about a test I alluded to in another video, and that is if you can show the absolute value of the terms of a series converge, then the series converges. Now, in fact, it turns out if you can do that, if if the summation of the absolute value of the terms converges, the the series is what's called absolutely convergent. But I'm not um, I'm not going to go too into this on in this video. I just want to use this test. To because this will get some more series that some of our other tests can't. Now the example I'd given in the in previous video was cosine of n over 2n squared plus 5. We were looking at that with the limit comparison test and what we were finding is that um, <coughs> excuse me, that um, this wasn't going to work. It didn't qualify the for the limit comparison test because all its terms were not positive. In fact, every so often it has negative terms again because it's oscillating. So, we're going to take a look at that and then we're also going to take a look because it will work for some alternating series, not all of them. So we'll look at one where it works and one where it doesn't. So the first um, series we're going to look at with this test is we're going to look at cosine of n over 2n squared plus 5. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the absolute value of this. So now I don't ever... Oh, geez, sorry about that. <coughs> now I don't ever have to, have to worry about it being negative. Now this series, I know, is less than or equal to 1 over 2n squared plus 5. Because cosine because cosine of n is less than or equal to 1. I don't have to worry about it being negative anymore. Basically we're comparing it to this. So we're looking at the absolute value of this which is less than or equal to 1 over 2n squared plus 5. So we have to decide if this converges or diverges. So several different tests we can use. We can use a comparison test. I always, l I'm a big fan of the limit comparison test. I know that the series one over n squared converges. I always call it a p series, but because it's of the form one over n to the p, where p is greater than one. So this is a convergent series. So what I'm going to do is the, with the limit comparison test, I'm going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over 2n squared plus 5 over 1 over n squared. Remember with the limit comparison test, it doesn't matter which one you pick on top, what's important in the limit comparison test is your choice of comparison. You want to choose something that you're going to be able to calculate the limit of. This I chose, this is the one I had to test. So, I have the limit as n goes to infinity going to flip and multiply, so I end up with n squared over 2n squared plus 5. We have a rational function. You probably already know that the horizontal asymptote of this is 1 half, but let's use calculus to do this. I have an infinity over infinity case, so this is absolutely a candidate for L'Hopital's rule. So I have the limit as n goes to infinity of derivative of on top over the derivative on bottom. So 2n derivative of n squared over 4n plus 0. The n's cancel and I get 2 fourths or 1 half which is a constant. So the limit has to be 1 half. It's a non-zero finite number. So series 1 over 2n squared plus 5 converges, I'm going to have a long conclusion here so I might need some more room, by the limit comparison test. So, summation of the absolute value cosine n over 2n squared plus 5 converges by 
comparison test. We basically have a comparison test. Convergent, so this must be convergent. So, finally back to the one we were working with. Cosine of n over 2n squared plus 5 converges by what we just learned, which is the absolute value test. So, long way getting back to the one we wanted to show, but we did it. Now, one thing we we didn't show in this proof that we you know probably wouldn't hurt because we're using the comparison test. We could have shown that also these terms will never be zero because cosine of n will never be zero as long as n is an integer. It has to be integer multiples of pi to get zero. So you have to be able to get irrational numbers here. Um, we kind of didn't go into that step, but I did want to mention it. So I wanted to also look at this. I said, that, you know, in the beginning that there was another one we could we could do this with some alternating series. So negative one to the n over n squared is a perfect example because if we take the absolute value of its terms, well, the absolute value of this is the series one over n squared, which we know is convergent. By, like I said, I like to call it P series because that, but we could easily show it with a uh, integral test if we needed to. So we know that negative 1 to the n over n squared is convergent, and in fact it's absolutely convergent, but again, I'm not stressing that in this video, by the absolute value test. Now, so that's another way of using the absolute value test. Now we've got to be careful. Where it doesn't tell us anything, negative 1 to the n over n. I'm going to show you in another video on alternating series that this is in fact convergent. But if I take the absolute value of the terms, I basically get our harmonic series 1 over n, which we know diverges. So this doesn't tell us anything about the about the um, alternating series negative one to the n over n. It's still inconclusive. We are going to use the alternating series test on this one, and I'll show that in another video, so this one doesn't get any longer. So there's only so much we can say. So we do know that this one's absolutely convergent. What I'm, like I said, this one I'm going to show is convergent with what's called the alternating series test. This was not convergent, so this would not be an absolutely convergent series. This would be.